Hey guys, it's Dani. Welcome to another episode from our Orchid Care for Beginner series. Today, I'm very excited because we have a good one. We're gonna talk about everything you need to know about Phalaenops flower spikes. What do we do when the blooms fall? What happens if we cut the spike? Will the orchid bloom again? Everything that I can think of that you might wonder about. Today, I'm gonna tell you all about it because I have a gazillion mini Phalaenopsis just getting ready to bloom or rebloom, so I have a lot of things to show you. Before we start, a quick word from our sponsor. Today's episode together with our entire Orchid Care for Beginner series is of course sponsored by repotme.com, which offers you everything you could possibly need to properly take care of your orchid. From potting mixes to pots, fertilizers, accessories, they truly have everything you need to take care of your beautiful orchid. Now, if you're into other types of houseplants like succulents or cacti, they do have something for you as well. So check them out at my affiliate link down below in the pinned comment or in the description. You'll also find the products that I have been using for years and I really, really enjoy using even before this collaboration. So you have all you need down below in the description. Feel free to check them out at any time. And with that said, let us start. I actually structured this video. I have a little list. So as always, you will have chapters so you can see exactly what we're going to talk about. You can skip around if you want. And before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it. It really helps it out. And hey, why not subscribe? I do post multiple times a week all sorts of plant content. Alrighty then. Let us start with the beginning with one of the most asked question on my channel. Is it okay to repot orchids while they are in bloom? And the short answer to that is yes, it is okay to repot Phalaenopsis orchids while in bloom, but there are some risks associated with that. Not necessarily on the orchid, but on the flower spikes and the flowers themselves. And to support what I say, I have three examples here. I recently purchased a lot of mini fells. And as some of you might know, I already repotted them into bigger pots because they were just growing outside of their tiny pots. And of course they were in bloom. Most of them actually continued their bloom and they are producing more and more buds, but a few are starting to lose their flower spikes and their flowers, as you can see, even though this one actually has a flower spike that continues to bloom, but one flower spike is lost. Whenever we repot orchids, we put them through a certain amount of stress. Sometimes that stress can be a little too big. Depends on the orchid, on its initial health, on the environment, on how we transport it at home even. And the response to stress typically will be to lose buds, lose flowers, or lose the entire flower spike. As the orchid will prioritize vital structures such as leaves and roots. Flowers are not vital. They serve for reproduction, but more important than that is survival of the individual. So in my experience, in many, many cases, the orchids will not be affected by repotting. They will continue to bloom or produce more buds, but there are some cases in which you might actually lose the buds and flowers. If it is really important for the orchid to repot, maybe it has pests or maybe the medium is bad, the roots are dying, then forget about the flowers, repot the orchid. The orchids will rebloom. But if you can wait, if the orchid looks very, very healthy in the original mix, just wait it out, enjoy the blooms, and you can repot at a later date, maybe in a couple of months or so, after you've had your fill of these really, really beautiful flowers. Next up, the blooms on your orchid are falling. Oh my goodness, what did you do wrong? What can you do to save your orchid? Well, the answer is nothing because your orchid absolutely does not need saving. Flowers do not last forever. Think of all the other flowers you've ever seen. Do they last forever? No, right? Well, orchid flowers are the same. Phalaenopsis flowers can last a long time. But when you purchase an orchid, you don't really know how long it has been in bloom. Maybe it has been in bloom for two months in the nursery, but when you get it, you're gonna have the blooms for a week and then they will fade. Also, it could happen that during transport, fluctuations in temperature, or maybe drafts or other extremes have affected your orchid and now it's kind of just losing flowers as a response to that stress. Or maybe your orchid was in bloom for the past three months and now all of a sudden it's starting to lose flowers. In the vast majority of cases, that is absolutely normal and you should not worry. There are many things that can happen after flowers fall. The orchid can produce even more buds, maybe secondary branches, maybe the initial branch can continue to grow and produce more buds and more flowers, or you can have an orchid just completely lose both of its flower spikes. Trust me when I tell you all of these cases are absolutely fine, absolutely normal. The orchids actually grow best 
when they don't have flowers. Flowers consume a lot of energy, but they don't produce anything in return. They are just there for reproduction purposes. What really matters for an orchid are the leaves, the crown, stem, and the roots. All of these vital structures that maintain it alive. Flowers, they're just there for the show and they will come back, don't worry, with proper care, they will rebloom. We're gonna talk about that. But flowers fading usually don't really mean anything. That said, there are a few things that maybe in our environment can affect the blooms. Maybe they will fall prematurely due to something in our environment or something we did. To put your mind at ease, I do have a video in which I talk about how to promote or extend the life of blooms as much as possible. So I'll link you to it down below in the description. Check that one out just for your knowledge. Most cases though, flowers falling, absolutely fine. Even if it's due to shock, sometimes you really can't control how these orchids have been treated through transport, right? So don't worry about that, but check that video if you feel like you have done something to your orchid. Just remember that flowers are never a good indication of health on a new orchid. So don't worry about them all that much. While falling of flowers usually doesn't mean anything bad, most of the times it's an indication that they just served their purpose, falling of buds is a different story. We call it bud blast and it can happen due to various reasons. On new orchids, bud blasts can happen when you change their environment suddenly. Let's say in their greenhouses they were used to very high humidity, maybe a certain type of temperature, then you purchase them, maybe you expose them to the cold outside, you put them in your house and your house is much much drier. While Phalaenopsis themselves have absolutely no issue with dry environments, when they switch environments they do need a little bit of time to adapt and typically that is very stressful for them so they will start to shift non-vital structures, such as the buds. So for new orchids, bud blast is really not a huge problem. Sometimes it is to be expected, don't worry too much about it, but if you have an orchid which has been in your care for a while, it is reblooming and all of a sudden is losing buds, then maybe something in the environment is affecting it. It can also be something in the care, maybe you are not watering it correctly. Typically bud blast is a sign of stress, but it's important to put it in the correct context. If it's a new orchid, don't worry about what you might have done because most probably you didn't do anything bad, it's just the orchid trying to accommodate the changes while making sure all of the vital structures are protected. Again, I have a more elaborate video on bud blast down below. If you feel like it, check it out. But falling of buds, yes, it does happen. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes not very okay, and maybe you can correct it. All right, let's get to a little bit more of a bushy subject, cutting flower spikes. At some point, whether it's a few months later or maybe even a year later, the orchid will remain flowerless. All of the flowers will have fallen. At this point, we have a few options. We can cut the flower spike below a node or we can completely cut flower spikes. I'll try to keep it short in this video, but you know me, I have an elaborated video on cutting flower spikes down below. But really fast, what can happen if we cut the flower spike above a growing node is that we can obtain a secondary flower spike, which is practically a branch which will produce buds and flowers. So we can promote the continuous flowering of the flower spike. But that doesn't happen all of the time. And in my experience, it's somewhere in the 50-50 mark. And I have two examples to show you here. These are, again, two of my new Phalaenopsis. I cut the flower spikes above nodes. One is producing a secondary shoot. The other one is not. And we're not done here. The secondary shoot might choose to grow and bloom or it might choose to just pause and do nothing instead. And this is because, depending on environment mainly, your orchid will choose to not bloom anymore, but go directly into active growth, in which it starts to grow leaves. And this particular one just started growing this leaf more vigorously. It's gonna grow new roots. It's practically going to grow as an individual plant. Bottom line, there is no way of telling what your particular orchid will do because the environment will have something to say but also the actual orchid because these two orchids are living next to each other in the same room. One of them decided to produce the secondary spike, the other one decided not to. And even if the secondary spike is produced, there's no guarantee it will actually bloom. So what happens if the flower spikes decide to not do anything? Well. 
they can actually sit like this green for an entire year and when the new blooming season comes your orchid might decide to start growing them again. It can also decide to produce another flower spike, so a primary flower spike like it normally should. It can decide not to do anything with these flower spikes and after one year go ahead and dry them up. <laughs> Any scenario is viable and can happen. It makes you wonder why it hangs on to them just to dry them like one year later. I don't know, but it can happen. Reason why many of us growers who are already pretty used to Phalaenopsis decide to not try to induce secondary spikes and play this little lottery game and just go ahead and cut the flower spikes at the base. So what happens when we do that? Well, obviously we are cutting away any possibility of this flower spike to produce branches. So no more blooms from this flower spike, but that is okay because the orchid can now fully concentrate on growing leaves and roots and in the next flowering season it can put all of that stored energy into the most glorious flower spike. This has been my personal experience and I usually opt to completely cut the flowers in the springtime, maybe in April or May, and then let the orchid focus on growth and then produce brand new flower spikes in the winter. So it's absolutely fine to cut the flower spikes at the base, even if they're green, even if they're yellow, and especially if they're all dried up because they will never create any secondary branches ever. And what happens if we just let the flower spike be? We don't cut it anywhere. That's okay, you can if you want to. Sometimes it can happen that it will continue to produce buds from the very tip, so it will elongate. The bad thing about it is that you will be left with a portion of the flower spike absolutely bare and you will have flowers towards the end pretty much all the time. That is absolutely okay if you like it. I personally do not like the look, so rarely do I leave these flower spikes be too much, but it's just a personal taste at the end of the day. Just so you know, the orchid can definitely do that. It can definitely not grow anymore from here. It can start to actually produce a secondary branch even if you don't cut the flower spike above a note. If the orchid wants to do that, it will do that. But what will absolutely 100% happen with the flower spikes in the end after many months or maybe one year or two years is that the flower spike will completely dry up. It will be spent. Time at which you can just cut it off because it will make the orchid look a little bit tidier. This flower spike will never bloom again, ever, ever, ever. And you can rest assured all the flower spikes on these typical flower shop phalaenopsis orchids in the end after a while they will dry out like this so just cut them and don't worry it is absolutely normal the orchid will produce brand new flower spikes with good care obviously and if you don't know how to rebloom your phalaenopsis don't worry i got you covered check the description under this chapter you're gonna find my link because there is a trick there there's a temperature trick that you need to do in order to rebloom your phalaenopsis now hold on to your hats because if your orchid decides to continue the flower spike with new buds, when they open, you might have the surprise to find the flowers are a little bit different than how the older flowers looked. So as I was saying at the beginning, when we purchase orchids, we might put them through a little bit of a shock and they will require a little bit of energy to get adjusted to your new environment and that can have an effect on the buds and flowers. If they're not gonna fall, if they will continue to open, they might actually look less than ideal. Very, very often it happens that the new flowers that open are smaller than the older ones. And I mean much, much smaller. That is absolutely normal and most probably nothing to worry about. It's just the orchid trying to adapt a little bit to the change. But not only size can be affected, coloration and pattern as well. You might have an orchid which will start to produce very faded flowers, the patterns might lack altogether, the colors will be a lot paler. Again, that is absolutely normal and it has to do with the stress of acclimating to a new environment. And in some cases, you will discover that the flowers not only are the same size, but also they look a little bit better than the older ones. 
And this happens a lot with color changing Phalaenopsis orchids, which are a thing. Yes, they will not change their color from pink to blue, but there are orchids which typically will open with a much more intense color and then as they age the flowers can start to fade away a little bit. There are orchids which can open red and fade away to pink and so on and so forth. So surprises with new flowers, they are to be expected, sometimes not so good, sometimes unexpected and wonderful, but all you have to know is that it's pretty normal with new orchids, the ones that you just purchased from the shop. When your orchid will rebloom in the next season, most probably you will not have something like this and most flowers will be about the same size. They will all kind of be identical. Or if you have a color changer, expect it to color change yet again. Now let's talk a little bit about the primary spikes, the ones that emerge from the axis of the orchid. Typically, they will be produced once a year in the flowering season, and this is because they are dependent on the temperature in your environment. There is a little bit of a trick to induce flowering. Once a year in the autumn or winter, typically a Phalaenopsis will produce new primary spikes, no matter what you do with the older spikes, whether you keep them on, cut them all together, or cut them in half, no matter what, a Phalaenopsis that goes through the temperature drop can produce brand new flower spikes. How many flower spikes? As many as the orchid can. One, two in most cases, but even three. Now, don't be fooled by this one that has four flower spikes. There are actually two orchids in here. One of them is the basil cakey. So each of them produce two flower spikes. But obviously, if your orchid has a cakey, that cakey will produce new flower spikes at the same time with the mother plant. Now, are there exceptions throughout the year? Yes, absolutely. And it happens a lot that sometimes there are some very weird cold fronts outside. So for a week or two, you're experiencing blizzards in the middle of spring. It happened before, it will happen again. In these instances, the orchids might get a little bit tricked into thinking that, oh wait, it, it's kind of autumn again, let me produce a flower spike. It can happen. If the orchid has space on its axis, it can produce one flower spike in autumn and another one in spring or somewhere in winter. It's not unheard of, it's not very, very common, but depending on the temperature in your home, they can do that. If your temperature in your home is constantly on the low side, your orchid might actually be blooming itself into extinction, <laughs> pretty much. It can actually bloom so much and produce so many secondary spikes or brand new spikes that it will not have time to grow vegetatively. These are actually worm growing plants. They don't experience cold, cold temperatures. They experience a mild temperature drop, which induces blooming, but constant cold and constant bloom induction is not good. Everything has to be within measure. Hence why I really do like to cut all of these flower spikes at the end of spring and wait for new ones. So whatever you do, make sure your orchid doesn't bloom all of the time for three years because it's not really all that great for its health long term. Now, primary spikes can also produce branches. You don't have to cut them anywhere to encourage a secondary spike. If your orchid is the type that is branchy and if you've taken very good care of it throughout the year, then it can definitely branch out. And in the end, you can have this wonderful and magical cascade of blooms just with an initial flower spike. And I'm gonna show you on the screen right now the Shalariana, which is my pride and joy. Just look at that one flower spike. Many flower shop Phalaenopsis are descendants of the Shalariana and other very heavily blooming orchids. They have been selected for vigorous blooming, so they are very capable in producing branchy flower spikes and a lot of blooms. But in order to obtain a very branchy and nice flower spike, I believe that it is important to offer good care, fertilizer, good temperatures, and also not to leave on the older spikes. Old spikes, which are still green, may or may not bloom, but they will consume. The orchid invests energy constantly in them to keep them green. They are consumers. And in my experience, the more old flower spikes left on the orchid, the lesser the bloom show in the blooming season is. So just so you know, if branchiness is what you're looking for, you can definitely obtain it with primary spikes. You don't have to induce secondary spikes by cutting anything above nodes. Treat your orchid properly and you will get the greatest show your orchid can produce with primary flower spikes.
Now let's talk a little bit about the shape of these flower spikes. All of the orchids that I kind of showed you have these beautiful arching flower spikes, right? Well, it took a bit of effort and forward thinking to get this shape because here's the catch. Flower spikes, even though naturally archy and pendant, they grow towards the light. And this can be an issue if your orchid grows next to a white wall like I have most of my orchids. If you have a window and your orchid is positioned in front of the window, the flower spikes will grow and arch towards that window. Very nice. But if you have grow lights above, then your orchid will grow towards the most brilliant, brightest source, which can sometimes be a white wall reflecting the light. Hence, from something beautiful and archy like this, we can end up with something like this. One of the flower spikes arches really nice and the flowers, the flowers orient themselves towards the light as well, because why wouldn't they? So everything looks nice. We call this a nice shingling aspect. So this is the first flower spike and then the second flower spike. What the heck happened here? <laughs> We don't know. They're trying to face whatever side they can, even downwards. So this is something you might discover in time. In order to obtain that beautiful, very nice archy flower spike, you kind of need to think in advance where your orchid will sit throughout the duration of formation of the flower spike, because it will always grow towards the light. The buds and flowers will always orient themselves to open towards the light. And if you kind of move the orchid around and change its relative position to the light source, you're gonna have accidents like this. And if you think this is not very bad, let me show you the worst display that I managed to obtain this year. Ta-da! Well, what's wrong with it? It looks very nice. This is what's wrong with it. This flower spike somehow turned back. It was growing here and I noticed it at some point and tried to turn it around. And of course it was already rigid. I couldn't do a good job. So now I did the best that I could and orient the flowers towards the front. So if you look at the orchid like this, you can still see the flowers opened towards you. But I worked a little bit on that because the flower spike, look how arched it is. So yes, shaping flower spikes is a thing. I'm gonna link it down below to some videos that I made in the past. I like to work with light and positioning the orchid in regards to the light, but it can also shape flower spikes with flower stakes. So I do think I have very elaborate videos on this aspect, but do expect flower spikes to be a little bit of a nuisance or in the best case scenario, a little bit naughty and not really do what you want them to do. But did you know that flower spikes not only produce buds and flowers, but also baby plantlets? We call them keikis. Yes, in the case of Phalaenopsis, they can absolutely produce brand new little plants from one of their growth nodes. And did you also know these baby plants can produce flower spikes at the same time with the mother plant and they grow up very, very fast. Now, I do have a more elaborate video on how you can promote baby plants or keikis it's not as easy with orchids. Many houseplants can be propagated pretty easily through cuttings and stuff. These guys, not so much really. No matter what clickbaity video you might've watched, it's really not that easy. I do have a video in which I tell you a little bit more on how you can promote and fully grow to maturity a keiki. So check it down below. But just so you know, sometimes you cut a flower spike and you want to promote a secondary branch and the orchid will produce a keiki or it will produce a keiki no matter if you do anything to the flower spike or not. It is very normal. It can actually happen. I do suggest that you remove these keikis and pot separately because at some point they will need the roots to sustain them and to absorb water. And if they're in the air, they will not have access all that easily to water. You will not have time to spray the roots every day and fertilize them and so on and so forth. So they will suck energy from the mother plant. These guys kind of need to be removed at some point. And of course I have a video on that as well. You can find it, of course, linked down below. But just so you know, if you get a bundle of little leaves on a flower spike, you're gonna be a parent or, or a grandparent actually. <laughs> plant a grandparent, there we go. One thing you should also know is that flower spikes will never ever grow anything in the places where flowers used to be. The growth points there are already spent. There is nothing left. 
Now, in my experience, which spans over 10 years at this point, I've never seen anything ever growing back from here. It doesn't make sense of something growing back from here, but I have been in the hobby enough to know that orchids are very surprising. So if one in a million orchids or 10 million orchids will have a little mutation that it can sprout a secondary branch from this side, I'm not gonna be surprised, but don't expect it to do that. Secondary branches, or keikis will sprout from these dormant buds. They will become active if something stimulates them. But up here where the flowers fell, you will never ever have anything else sprouting. Hence why I personally am not a fan of having these flower spikes just continue blooming over and over again, having these bare portions, let's say, of the flower spike and then the flowers at the bottom. It's a personal thing. It doesn't mean anything. If you like it, do you, don't listen to me. But just so you know, don't expect anything coming from these sides of the flower spike, but definitely everything below the spent growth notes, they can wake up. And lastly, the production of brand new flower spikes is very, very closely related to the care you provide to your orchid and the active growth period. Physically, it is impossible for an orchid to produce new flower spikes if it doesn't have space, if it doesn't have a leaf joint that is available and fully formed to produce a flower spike. So allowing your orchid to practically grow is not only very healthy and vital for your orchid, but also it creates spaces for brand new flower spikes. The more your orchid grows, the more spaces it will have available, the more flower spikes you can potentially have, the better they will look, the branchier they will look. And really it all starts with how you care for your orchid and how you allow it to put that energy and those resources in producing leaves and roots. As I was saying, we need to strike a balance between having it in bloom all of the time and having it grow without consumers all year round. So with this said, I will make sure to add down below multiple links that have to do with everything we talked about today. Check it out whenever you want. And for today, that has been it. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and just spending some time with me. I hope you'll have a great weekend. Thank you, Repotme, for sponsoring yet another wonderful video from the series. I love making these videos. And if you wanna stay in touch with me on social media, just follow me. I'm at Miss Orchid Girl pretty much everywhere. Most importantly though, do subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date with all of the videos that I post. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye!